Hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. We're in Elwha Dam RV Park in beautiful Port Angeles, Washington. Guess what? It's raining again. So, hey, that's the Northwest. Don't you love it? That's what makes everything so green. Anyway, that's not why you're watching the video. What we're working on is this refrigerator. Customer states that the refrigerator is not working on LP. They'll travel down the road and when they leave, it's working on LP. Everything's great. Everything's staying nice and cold and they drive down about an hour or so down the road and they come back and they check it and it's turned itself off. Um, not only has it turned itself off, but there's an FL fault on the refrigerator, which means flame failure. Okay, and so they restart it, they'll go down the road, maybe an hour or so later, the flame will go out. So what's going on with that? So follow with me, we're going to try to see if we can troubleshoot that. So let's jump in here and take a look. So we have our Norcold refrigerator. Now, what would be one of the first things you would look for in a situation like this? Uh, a lot of people are going to point to the refrigerator, the refrigerator, the refrigerator, the refrigerator, something's wrong with the refrigerator. Um, but the refrigerator works just fine on electricity, it does not work on LP. But let me be clear on that statement. It is working on LP. It will ignite like it's supposed to, and it will burn like it's supposed to. What's happening is a flame is going out, okay? So what I'm going to do is the refrigerator on the inside is on automatic, and another important step is the refrigerator is wanting to cool itself down. If you're going to troubleshoot your refrigerator, you need to make sure that it's, it's wanting to cool. In other words, if it's satisfied in temperature because it's been on electricity for the last five hours, then you can't troubleshoot the LP because the refrigerator just simply says, I'm at 37 degrees, I'm happy. So we have opened the door for about a minute. We've let that thermistor on the inside warm up a little bit, changing the ohms value to the control board here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unplug the AC plug, and you're going to see this ignite right in there, okay? So on three, two, one, I'm unplugging. I just unplugged it, and wait for it. There we go. So now we have, oh, what a beautiful blame, flame. What a wonderful flame. Oh my God, it's just so beautiful. You're gonna see that little thing start to glow. That is your electrode. What you see happening there with that glowing is the control board is sending a very small milliamp current through the wire, this orange wire right here, okay? The first thing that did was it started, sparked an arc. The gas valve opened, the gas was introduced into that burner. The burner is the thing with all the little blue grooves in it. And um, that is grounded. And the first thing is the gas valve opened, introducing gas into the burner. And then that little glowing thing started an arc. Now we have ignition. How does a control board know that we have ignition? How does a control board know that the gas is actually flowing and we have a flame? And so it's not just spinning raw fuel out into our area. Well, this is the cool thing. This is what I was saying. This orange wire here, the control board is sending a very small milliamp current through that wire, through that electrode, through the flame to ground. Like, Darren, you're an idiot. Well, check this out. There's carbon in that flame, isn't there? Okay, so let's use the carbon in the flame as a current carrying conductor, if you will. So we are shooting electricity through the flame to ground. Now that's really cool, it's very exciting, but what we have to be careful of is the gap of that electrode to the flame needs to be set just right. If the gap is too far or the gap is too close, we're not gonna get the correct milliamp reading back to the control board where the control board is gonna record that. Now what we're watching for here, and the reason I have you staring at that, let me see if zooming does anything better. Ooh, that's really groovy. Okay, so let me, there we go. So I want you to watch that flame and um, what we have seen is that flame all on its own is going to start fluttering. And we've even seen the whole flame extinguish and come back on almost in instantaneously. So let's watch that for a few minutes and see if it dis misbehaves for us. I don't see any misbehaving. Um, when we did this a few minutes ago, and it's what prompted me to grab my camera and make a video of this, is, and that's why I'm just holding this camera up to this flame, I was watching that flame flutter and sputter and spit. And that tells me there may be something going on with the regulator. So we're gonna be working on the regulator on this. So at this point, I'm saying there's nothing wrong with this refrigerator at all. Because if the flame did extinguish, it's going to try to start itself again. And let me prove that. Um, can you go turn off? Okay, customer's going to go turn off the LP. I got the right cylinder open. Okay, he's going to go turn off the thing, and we're going to actually extinguish the flame. As soon as you turn it off, get ready to turn it back on again. 
So he's going to extinguish the flame. You're going to see... Okay, it's off. Okay, the LP is off. And watch what happens when the LP gets turned off. The gas will bleed itself out, and the uh, it's going to try to start itself again. So this would be you're driving down the road, and the wind is blowing your flame out. Well, the refrigerator is going to try to start itself right away. No, keep them both off. I want I want it to I want all the LP to burn out. It's going to take a while because this is a small little flame. Um, so. Um, so if you're driving down the road and the wind blows your flame out, well, the refrigerator is going to um, try to start itself again. And uh, so what we've done just now is we've turned off the LP and um, we're going to wait for it to extinguish. And I'm doing this because I want you to see that it's going to try to start itself again. So if it tries to start itself again, that tells me all I need to know about this control board. The control board's fine and... Um, the problem is not with the refrigerator. The problem is not the control board because he's doing everything he's supposed to be doing. He's trying to reignite himself. Um, boy, it's taken forever for this thing to bleed out. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we can turn the propane back on. So it's not catching every once in a while you can see the, the, the lightning bolt um, camera shooting at 24 frames per second so okay so you got the propane on so here you are going down the road for example wind blew it out you see the refrigerator is trying to, to start itself again and uh, as soon as the gas gets back introduced back in it'll start itself or what will happen is what may have just happened you may have gotten a flame failure signal on the inside You'll get that because your refrigerator's tried to start a few times and it just gave up. You have an FL? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, off and back on again? Okay. Okay. So that's where your FL comes from. Your fl uh, f um, f uh, f it flamed out, basically. So she's going to turn it off and turn it back on again. And then we've got the LP back on. And it'll... Once the, ga once the gas gets back out here. Uh... There we go. It wants to. LP is coming back into the line. You sure the propane's open? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, there we go. Okay. So basically, that was a fun little experiment that I wanted to demonstrate for you. Basically, your refrigerator burned out uh, from a wind or something like that, and it um, it tried to reignite itself. You saw that, and it took maybe, I don't know how many tries, and after so many tries, it just gave up and gave you an FL on the inside. So that's how that works. Now, a um, little bonus feature for you there. And um, so really what we're trying to do, so let me just tell you what's going on, folks, because I don't know if this is going to misbehave. This is the story of my life. I, I show up and, and everybody says that the refrigerator or whatever is not working and I show up and it's working fine. But I, with my own eye, I watched this thing and I did see these flames flickering and sputtering, like I said. And I just wanted you to go through the process with me. I wanted to share this with you that the problem is not the refrigerator at all. There's nothing wrong with this refrigerator. The problem is very suspicious that there's something with the LP regulator. Well, gee, Darren, why did you say there's something wrong with the LP regulator? Because it's a regulator that is doing what? Regulating the flow. Okay. So in my mind, if the flow is interrupted and I got flickering and sputtering and spitting, then it's not making it through the regulator very smooth. Or we have bad um, lines. Um, there may be oil in our lines or something like that. So uh, let me pull a, pull you away from this. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an LP test. Um, an LP test is I'm going to watch my other video. Go on my, uh, click on my main YouTube channel, my RV Works YouTube channel, and go to my playlist. Go over to propane. And on the propane, you're going to see, I think I'm pointing to a, an AM SE tank on a Class C and I go through the entire process on how to use this slack tube right here. And I'll make a link down below on what this is and where to buy it and all this kind of stuff for those of you who want to do this yourself. And um, so I'm not going to recreate the three tests that you do in this video, but you can go watch that video if you want to know more. But what I will do is I'm going to start this troubleshooting with an LP pressure test to make sure that my LP is good. Now, where am I going to do this LP pressure test? Right here. Why right there, Darren? because this is the appliance that has the biggest problem. And so I want to know what is the LP at this point right here before it goes into the gas valve. Now they do have this little port right here, which is a gas port. You can plug into that, you can tap into that, um, but it's 
for my purposes, I can just as easily take this nut off, put my gadget on, and check my LP pressure. And then this fluttering and flickering, what we'll see is we'll see it on these, these water lines. We'll move around a little bit. We don't want them to move around. Does that make sense? Great. Let's get started. Okay, Darren's rule, use a backup wrench. So here we have, I'm taking this nut off, so I have a backup wrench on the valve itself, and I have a backup wrench on the fitting, and we're going to loosen that, and we're going to put my gadget in. I just wanted to show you the backup wrench. Very important. Got my slack tube here, my little homemade gadget here, and I've zeroed out to the meniscus right there, and I've got this. So then at this point, I close this valve. I'm now locked in. I am now part of this. Okay, go turn on a propane cylinder. You're going to see one side go up, one side go down. We're going to add the numbers up. We're looking for five and a half, five and a half, which is the target we're looking for. Okay, there we go. So let's see what we got. 6.12 and... 6.2 is 12.4. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to watch these bubbles. So I'm gonna, you're not gonna watch that. I'm gonna watch that. And so we're gonna watch the watch the water in my slack tube to see if the water starts to fluctuate. Now, if the water's staying still, then then I'm gonna head back over to this gas valve, looking for any debris or something that might be in this gas valve that's still kind of warm right now. So I'm not gonna stick my finger in there. So if the water behaves itself over here, then that's going to tell me that I need to take this gas valve apart and look into it because there's some kind of an obstruction that's not letting the gas flow through. Now, I have been getting a lot of comments, and I'm guaranteed to get somebody to tell me, well, Darren, why didn't you take the gas valve apart first? And there's more than one ways to skid a cat. This is how I do it. I love you guys, but if you don't like the way I do it, go look for another video. Yay! Everybody's ribbing me on my, my comments like, well, what'd you do it that way for? Dude, this is just the way I do it, okay? Build your own business, make your own videos, and we'll go watch your videos. So, not that I don't love you guys, but I don't need all the comments asking people well, why I should have, could have, would have done it this other way. So, I don't see these bubbles moving at all. In fact, they're behaving themselves beautifully. Now, here's a fun test. Um, the propane's back on. Go turn your furnace on. Okay, so just for funsies, we're going to turn the furnace on and we're going to watch. We could watch the bottom of the meniscus or the top of the meniscus. So when she turns her furnace on, we're going to see if this moves at all. I expect a little bit of movement because we are going to be consuming some of the propane that's in our, our, our copper line right here. So let's see here. Now I'm going to get a million comments because, well, you, Darren, you should have done it this other way. So the furnace, I have a lot of furnace videos too. So my furnace is now going to go through a pre-purge. And after about 15 seconds, you're going to see. So let's see. Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, if I can hit the right button. There we go. Oh, look at there. Okay. So that right there, I wanted to show you guys that. And you can turn your furnace back off. Okay. So remember on the video that you're going to go watch because you're going to do your homework and you're going to learn. Yeah, you are going to learn all about how to do your propane inspection and propane pressure tests. There we go. That is why we do a 50% load test, folks. Now, um, let's demonstrate something since I still have your rapt attention. That came down to about right there, right? Now, the furnace came on and it was blowing. And so that, I'm going to say that's like 5.4. Now, this knob over here has a size X drill bit on the top and I drilled that because the article that I read said let me move something here oh, wrong way there we go uh, that the size X drill bit rep uh, simulates a 50% load so this is closed right now denying the flow to go through my size X drill bit you watch that I'm gonna open up now should we not get about 5.4 let's see there's my 50% load so I'm actually a little bit lower. I'm actually at 4.9, but still, I want to make sure that, and I feel the, see, this is me doing that. Look, one-handed, how about that? Okay, closing that, went back up. So when we do the propane pressure tests on the other video, that's why we do a 50% load test, because I want to make sure that my furnace has enough propane to start if I have my refrigerator, my water heater, and I'm cooking a pot of beans on the stove. Okay, done with all that that has not moved. I am now very suspicious of this gas valve. So at this point, I'm going to move this off to the side and I'm going to look into this gas valve because maybe this restriction that was causing these things to fail and flutter and everything was in here. So let's go to that next. Okay, folks, we're back. We have taken off my gadget. And as I was 
putting things back together. I want to show you something. Look at how rough that is right there. That's supposed to be smooth right there. Okay. So look how rough that is. And then look at how rough, where are you? Where are you? Hold on. I don't know where you are. I'm zoomed in too tight. Hold on. Okay. Look at how rough that is. So now I'm suspicious that maybe this was, um, this is where it was sucking air. It's very possible that this was not a perfect connection right here. And we've got some air coming in right here, going through my gas valve, causing some air to come in. So Uh, at this point on the, and even that, that is rough even on my finger. And even, even this is, this has got some roughness to it. So I'm going to take some memory cloth, very gently try to clean this up. And I might put a new flare on this, just cut this flare off and put a new flare on. Cause that might be where the problem was. All right. So we have put on a new flare. I forgot to show you, I could have, I could have shown you how to make a flare, but anyway, flare is beautiful. So we've, we've taken emery cloth and we've cleaned up this the male part of the valve nice and smooth and what i did was i closed this and then i did very gentle emery cloth on on this side in there and um, took one of those cans of office air and sprayed it out to get all the little filings out not that any got in there of course and now i've got this back open again put a new flare um do you have that other piece the yes. piece that i cut off okay we're going to show you the piece that i cut off and and how bad it looks and um let me show you that real quick so that's the one we took off. Now, I also want to show you, see the grain of the copper, how it's twisted? And, and this thing was hard to get off originally, but you can see that, how it's twisted. So whoever put this on at the factory really went to town on this thing and twisted the, the copper. Now here, the way Darren does it, you could look at the grain of the copper and it's not twisted and it's tight. And we just checked for leaks and there's no leaks. But what I really wanted to show you was inside of there and that i believe was the problem that's what i'm stating now we're gonna let this thing run for a couple of days and um and see if we've fixed the problem but brand new rv right out of the factory right off the factory floor and um this is what we're running into here we found what i am considering the smoking gun and that is this little piece right here okay we showed you a close-up on it so i'm going to stop all of the diagnosis and we're gonna let this thing run for a couple of days now the folks are going to leave here they're going to be here for a couple of days. We're going to be following up with them with text and things like that to make sure they're going to run on LP for a little bit. And then they're going to leave in a couple of days. And we're going to see if this is going to work on LP for that interval of time. From here, they're going to drive about four hours to our east in Leavenworth, Washington. And you're going to send us postcards. Yes? Okay. Because yeah, yeah. that's a beautiful little town. And um, so we um, just to recap, you just watched the video. For me to make sense in my head, um, we started thinking maybe the refrigerator, but when the refrigerator was working on electric and it's working on gas and it's reigniting itself, that tells me there's nothing wrong with the refrigerator at all. So now I'm suspicious of the propane. And so before we found this problem, we were suspicious of the propane regulator, okay? And then we talked about all that and we actually did a propane test. We were expecting to see those little green water, which is distilled water with green food dye, but it didn't fluctuate. And that's when it led us, because this is a discovery. I don't script these things out and know ahead of time what we're gonna find. So we're discovering it as we go. And what we found was when we took this off, we found this. And I was about to take the gas valve apart, but when I saw all this buildup and all this stuff on there, we did a full stop. That's not correct. That's not what a flare is supposed to look like. And then the, the mating feet part of this was all chewed up. So we took the emery cloth, cleaned that up. So um, guys, if this was helpful, I'm, I do plan on doing more video on a refrigerator. I've had a lot of comments from folks. Um, I've done a lot of refrigerator videos, but I haven't done one specifically on the really deep down nitty gritty on how the gas valve works. And I do plan on doing one, but I'm super busy. If you do leave a comment, it takes me a week or two to get back to you. 
I'm working, okay? But I will get back to you if it's a comment that needs me to comment on it. So just give me some time, understand that I'm out here fixing all these problems and it might take me some time to get back to your comment, but I don't mind the comments. Um, and um, if this was helpful, thumb it up, subscribe if you like these kinds of things, um, share it with your friends. And I'm gonna sign off. This is Darren, where we make, where happy campers say my RV works.